Over the past couple of weeks, the brand new M1 MacBooks have gotten most of the recent coverage because frankly, what can I say? I can't lie to you guys, I love laptops. But even in their lowest price option, they are not the cheapest of the brand new line of M1 Macs. That distinction belongs to the brand new Mac Mini. You can get the full power of the M1 processor for less money with more port options and it's also smaller and it's just as quiet. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive. How does how does science even work on that? So how has the Mac Mini held up over a month of use? Let's find out. Well, that rubber protection is kind of good. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Ooh, let's turn this, there we go, there we go. A little overexposed, I can tell it's a little overexposed on my monitor. Obviously we've been talking a lot about the M1 computers recently because frankly, they are very impressive and I'm trying, I'm working real hard to get through all of the video requests that you've given me. So it's gonna take some time to get through everybody's comparison, everybody's requests. It's gonna take some time, so buckle up. Back to the Mac Mini. I've had the opportunity to use two versions of this computer. I've got the absolute cheapest $699 base model that Apple is letting me borrow. I don't keep it, it will go back in the next couple of weeks. But I've also got a personal one that I bought, which is the 16 gigabyte unified memory, one terabyte storage option. This one right here that you're seeing is the cheapest. In this time though, because of those two options, I've seen the gamut of the Mac Mini from the top of the performance to the bottom of the performance. Well. It's not that big of a difference. As we've already made an initial impressions video on this computer, there won't be too many differences here because what I, the way I make videos, I consider them impressions in progress. And I haven't seen any major changes, either good or bad, from my original video. This will be more of a refinement and status check on the things that I both like and dislike after messing around with this for the whole month. Part of that is I won't cover the spec layout again here. If you would like to hear a little bit more about the different options on how you can spec out the new Mac mini, I'll point you over to my original video, which will get into the nitty gritties of the different pricing options. And before we get into those each is what is my overall one month impression of the Mac mini? Honestly, before the M1 version, I'd never considered the Mac mini in my life for use. If you've seen my videos before, I do this YouTube thing as a hobby. So any tech that I buy has to work for me in both my office day job and in my YouTuber other night job, like it's night right now. So I guess this is my superhero secret identity. And the Intel Mac minis have just never had the oomph for me when you compare those to things like the MacBook Pro 13 or the MacBook Pro 16. But this would definitely not be the time that the M1 processor has changed my opinion on a couple of these new computers because I've never liked the MacBook Air before either. Man, new processors make weird friends out of us all. That's what's really impressed me about the Mac Mini. It's such a small computer. It takes up almost no room on my desk, but has done all of my work pretty flawlessly. I do my video editing in Final Cut Pro, I do my photo editing in Adobe Photoshop, and I use the iWork suite for my work. Get it? I work, my work, dad jokes. Ding. Terrible attempts at humor aside, the price to performance here has really kind of blown me away. I am impressed with my version with that more memory and storage, but for the price, I would hope to have a usable computer. That's still a lot of money. Desktops and laptops have very different competitions. It's much easier to get a lot of power for not a lot of money in the desktop world. For example, my eight year old and I built him a custom PC for under a thousand dollars. That's pretty darn powerful. I'm talking Ryzen 3700X, GTX 1660, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte solid state drive. It's very quiet. And while it's not as small as the Mac mini, it has way more connections and usability. Size. When it comes to desktops, size isn't as important to me when we're looking at computers that aren't gonna go anywhere. Plus, if you like RGB, custom PCs are like the RGB wonderland. Everything's shiny, everything's all sorts of different colors. All of that to say, I'm more impressed with the base model of the Mac Mini. Yes, you can also build or buy a decent PC for around $700, but that level is where Apple can take a claim in having a very powerful computer for an absolute reasonable price. I mean, it's just, it's remarkable. That base model is really where the magic happens. Okay, on to the specifics of the things that I like and don't like after I've been using one of these for a solid month. I like starting these sections off with the negatives. The first negative I've got about the Mac Mini is actually, it is a new negative for me, but it's not something that I've personally come across. However, I've seen enough people grumbling about it on the internet, especially from people that I trust, that I'm willing to solidly put this in the negative category. So, hasn't happened to me, 
but it seems like it's a big enough problem that I will comment on it. And that's Bluetooth connections are apparently acting wonky on certain Mac minis. Either it's weird on certain Mac minis or there are very specific cases where certain USB-C compatibility issues will cause disruption in Bluetooth connections. A quick Google search, which is why we're talking about this in the video, it shows that the issue didn't start with the M1 Mac mini, but is a longer term Mac mini problem. For more information on this, check out my buddy Patrick's video on the subject, link in the description below. Obviously with the popularity of Bluetooth mice and keyboards, which is the only peripherals I personally use, having connection problems like that is a pretty big deal when you consider like 95% of human computer interaction is done with a keyboard and mouse. Don't, don't fact check me on those percentages. I totally just made them up. But a large chunk of your interaction with the computer goes through keyboards and mice. I tried getting this to work. I haven't had problems with my Magic Keyboard or my Logitech MX Master 3. So hopefully some kind of a software update will fully clear this out. The next thing that I don't like about the Mac Mini becomes a bigger problem the bigger your dollar sign is for what you're paying for. I don't like that you can't upgrade the internal storage. I mean storage, not memory. I totally I totally understand that unified memory needs to be soldered onto the motherboard in special ways to get that insane speed of the memory. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that being whatever it is that Apple puts it on. But M.2, NVMe, like those kind of storage drives are incredibly easy to install. I've got laptops with almost smaller chassis than the Mac Mini, and they still let you put your own hard drive in those. The reason this bothers me more, the higher in the upgrade path you go, is of all the places that I think Apple charges too much, storage space is absolutely it. If I was gonna agree, if you were gonna say, Gary, there is an Apple tax out there. I would only agree that the Apple tax exists in their storage options. $800 for two terabytes of storage is outrageously expensive. You can buy a pretty high end M.2 two terabyte drive on Amazon for about 240 bucks. If we do wanna spend $800, we could actually get a four terabyte drive with lots of money left over. This doesn't bother me as much on MacBooks, though I do wish we could upgrade those MacBooks as well. But desktops, again, they have different competitions and you should absolutely have some user upgradable features when it's, I mean, I guarantee this is mostly empty space. I'm not allowed to open this, but if I did open this, I guarantee it would be mostly empty space and I'm sure there's a spot for an M.2 drive somewhere. If there was one thing that I was really frustrated with Apple and would wish they would work on, if they have an expensive supplier or very specific drives they wanna add for optimal functionality, fine, but give us a slot to maybe put a slower drive in. But as far as negatives go, that's really it. It's hard for me to be upset at the Mac Mini for what it is. If it were more expensive, that storage thing would be way more irritating. The more money you spend on this, the more irritating the storage is. But this leads me into the first thing I like, the base model Mac Mini's price. $699 gets you everything Apple Silicon promises. You get the full powered CPU, you get the full powered GPU, you get an actual active cooling system. This is priced incredibly well. And if you only even have a passing interest in trying out the Apple Silicon computers, this is the way to go because there isn't much risk. In computer land, 700 bucks is not that much. I also really like all of the IO options on the back of the computer. I've been using a MacBook Pro 16 for the longest time. And I use it in what I call dock mode here in the house to get all of the IO I need. And to make that work, those high quality docks cost between 200 and 300 bucks, which when you just purchased a $2,000 or greater, probably much greater computer, spending that much extra sucks. If you aren't some kind of creative professional that needs to import SD cards, you really don't need anything else to get the Mac mini going. It's got two Thunderbolt 3, two USB-A, HDMI, Ethernet, and a headphone jack. I wish, I wish all of Apple products shipped with this. I mean, even the 2015 MacBook Pro, like my wife's 2015 MacBook Pro 13, has a lot of this same IO. It also, because we have these ports, it does kind of help alleviate that storage problem I had earlier, because Thunderbolt 3 is a pretty darn fast connection and plugging it into a NAS, RAID, or other kind of external drive will give you more space without spending that extra money. And I like that here because this is probably just gonna sit on your desk. So it's easier to set up like a bigger hard drive enclosure. Plus the Mac mini is the only one of the initial M1 Macs that can support more than one display with one pushed via the HDMI and the other pushed through the Thunderbolt 3. Personally, I only have one ultra wide and I've been using it through the HDMI. I love having that option. Something else that I like as we're looking at the back of the computer again, 
I really like below all this I.O., we've got an internal fan system on the Mac Mini. Much like the MacBook Pro 13, this has an active cooling system, but it's one of those active cooling systems that you'd be really hard pressed to tell that it's even there because the Mac Mini is completely silent when in use, which you don't realize how awesome that is until you try using something else. For example, this past weekend, I wanted to get some work done on my desktop Windows PC, and though it's never bothered me before, man, it's loud. And I don't think it's loud in isolation. And I didn't even do anything strenuous on it. I was just moving some video files around, but it only took me a few minutes, just a few minutes. And man, I was totally over that noise, which makes me kind of nervous that I'm going to be spoiled for every other computer we bring into the studio for making these videos about, because I just really appreciate, I love how silent my office is now. And the fan barely ever works at all. Even when I'm rendering or editing video, which is the biggest task that I do, I can't, if I put my hand back here, I can feel air going out. So I know the fan's working, but I've never actually heard anything. Speaking of power, I continue to love the power on hand in these M1 computers. There's a caveat here being that my preferred programs have been optimized for operating on the M1s. And if your programs have also transitioned over, you will have amazing power, especially cost to performance and power to performance. And even if it hasn't been totally optimized, I haven't had any major issues with Intel-based programs running on Rosetta 2 either. There are other programs out there though that haven't yet been optimized and they do not fully work on the new computers. So before you buy one of these, check with your software developer to make sure that you don't have a deal breaker in a piece of software. Especially if you make money with these computers, you gotta make sure everything works before you buy one of these. There's lists out there that you can check. Check with the people that make your software that it'll work on this. Thankfully for me though, it's been totally smooth and I haven't seen a single difference in my workflow going from my Intel Max to the Apple Silicon Max. It's just been amazing. And the best part, the best part for me is Catalina. Mac OS Catalina, was the worst version of Mac OS I've seen thus far. It caused me all sorts of stability problems and the way Final Cut Pro would crash for me on a reliable basis, that made me move my video editing over to Windows. The reason I have a custom built Windows PC is to use DaVinci Resolve on it because Final Cut Pro was giving me lots of problems. However, since getting into Mac OS Big Sur with these new ARM based computers, I haven't had a single issue so far. He says while praying mentioning it, it hasn't just cursed everything and now this video that we're gonna try to edit here in a little bit is gonna be a nightmare. Everybody, if you've got a wooden table, knock for Gary. <laughs> and that's really the last major thing that I've liked over the past month. I really, really like the stability. I am kind of a busy person and I personally have a lot of work to do on any given day. Focusing on the video production part of my life, for these YouTube videos, I need gear that works, works fast, but most importantly, works reliably. And I'm willing to move wherever I need to go to get that reliability. You just heard me say, not two minutes ago, that Catalina caused me to move to Windows for a time. So I'm willing to abandon gear that does not work. And thankfully, this works because vice versa, I'm back to using these M1 Max for basically everything minus my day job which gave me a windows laptop to use so during eight hours of the day i'm stuck in a windows laptop that's very loud by the way but in this kind of work i'm using these because they work fantastically for me but at the end of the day so what right how has the mac mini held up over the past month and would i still recommend it so i just spent the last what two thousand or so words it's probably it's not exactly i can never show like the exact number because i like to riff and i never stick to my script but i spent lots of words talking about the new m1 max they're not perfect and in the past month it's really shown us what we can and we cannot use this new chipset to do however if you are one of the lucky that have all of your programs optimized for this it's amazing it's amazing literal phenomenal performance that is not matched by anything else in this price range this gives my almost four thousand dollar macbook pro a run for its money and it's a seven hundred dollar entry level computer though if your programs are not optimized it can be hit or miss for how these new computers will work for you again for me it's been awesome my life is now quieter less cluttered and it's way more stable with a computer that costs a fraction of what my older macbook pro did and that's a pretty sweet deal. Like what else do you need in life? Shouldn't come as any surprise, but I still wholeheartedly recommend this Mac mini. I love 
this cheapest version. It is the cheapest way to get into the new M1 processors. And you only really need a basic monitor keyboard mouse to get going. You don't need a dock. You don't need anything else. It just works the second you turn it on. I can't give anything else a better recommendation than that. And even if you do have Bluetooth problems, there's enough connections on the back here that you don't need a dock in that way either because there's enough here to get the computer running even if you don't want to do everything wirelessly. And if you like this video and you want to see the power of the Mac Mini for video editing, you can find the video. Good news. I got a video just for you and you can find it by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.